Hi everybody, I wanted to make this uh, video for the 2A ANOVA and I'm going to go through the R code mostly but also kind of um, come back to this guide. I'm not going to make a video walking you through the guide because I think it has a lot of detail but I wanted to make this video mostly just to connect the R help and tips with the guide. So with 2A ANOVA, um, just wanted to go over the model first. The model is just like one way but with one more factor. So you have the response variable just like before, it's a quantitative response variable. And then you have the grand mean, and you have an effect of the first factor, and then the effect of the second factor, and the epsilon, the error term. K means how many groups you have in the first factor. So in the pig's example, A or alpha is the effect of antibiotics, and so there's two Ks, there's um, two groups, yes or no. With beta, it's whether or not the pig got B12 and there are J groups, so J equals 2 in this case, because they either did or did not get antibiotics. But just as an example, if the pigs had gotten maybe three different dosages of the um, antibiotic, then we'd have alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. You'd have three Ks. But here we just have two for uh, antibiotics and two for the B12. Okay, so then we have two factors. And we have two research questions. Does taking antibiotics affect pig weight gain? And does taking B12 affect pig weight gain? Notice I'm using the word effect, which implies cause and effect. But given that the pigs were randomly assigned to each of the four groups, then we can ask questions about cause and effect. So this is OK. If not, we would just say, is there a difference in weight gain between those who take antibiotics and those who don't? Or is there a difference in pig weight gain uh, between those who take B12 and those who don't. Um, but here it's okay to ask about cause and effect. Okay, so we see from the running the table command that you have three in each of the four combinations. And if we assume that there's no interaction, we have a model that is the grand mean plus effective antibiotics plus effective B12 plus the error term. And so what we're going to do in R is estimate the two alphas and two betas, because there's an effect of getting antibiotics, a group effect for not getting antibiotics, a group effect for taking B12, and a group effect for not taking B12. Okay, so let's go up here, and I'm going to clear out what I was doing before. And first I'm going to read my data in, and when I do the STR, I have gain is a number, um, an integer. It's the the weight gain of each pig. And then B12 is the factor with two levels. So we have either they did have or did not have B12. And then antibiotics, either they did have or did not have um, B12, or, or antibiotics. So yes, no for B12, and yes, no for antibiotics. So the first thing we want to do is find the grand mean. That's the mu from the model, the estimate of the mu. And in order to do that, you can just run a simple mean function, and you, you have the mean of the gain for all the, the pigs, and that's 24.5. And now to estimate those alpha, those alpha values, um, you know, alpha of antibiotics equals no, and alpha of antibiotics equals yes, we want to estimate the mean for each group based on whether or not they got antibiotics. So there's a handy function called aggregate, and this aggregate function will calculate a mean for separate groups, or, or you can also do standard deviation, you can do lots of other functions. But the way this function works is you put in the y variable first, the, or the quantitative variable that you want to calculate uh, a statistic for, which is gain, and then a tilde, and then your grouping factor, which in this case is antibiotics. And then you give it the data equals feed. The way I got feed was what I called the data when I read it. And then FU1 means function, and I'm using a mean here. I'm getting means for each group. You can also use SD, which I will use later on in this code. But first I'll get the means. So the mean of the, oh wait, I think I did B12 first, but it works the same for antibiotics. So let me actually run this antibiotics first. And so this gives me the mean of the two antibiotics groups. So those, who, those pigs who got antibiotics, their mean gain is 28.5. Those who did not get antibiotics, their mean was 20.5. So we see that there is an average difference between the two groups. We see there's a difference of 8. Later on, we're going to test if this is significant or not. But we see that there's a sample difference. 
So we want to estimate the alpha. And so if we go back to the guide, what we're trying to estimate is these two alphas. The ante equals yes and ante equals no. The way we do that down here, the ante equals no is going to be the no anti-group mean. So the mean for the pigs who did not get antibiotics minus the grand mean. The, the alpha for ante equals yes, the effect of getting antibiotics is going to be the mean for those who took antibiotics minus the grand mean. And I'll show you where I'm getting these numbers in R, is I use my group mean, the, the, for the no, I use the 20.5, and then subtract it minus the grand mean, 24.5. So the effect of not getting antibiotics is going to be minus 4. Then the effect of the grand mean of, of yes getting antibiotics is the mean for yes, 28.5 minus that grand mean we got before, 24.5, which is positive 4. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for B12. I, I already ran this code earlier, but if you run this code, it gives you the, uh, the mean gain for those who did not get B12, which is 11, and the mean gain for those who did get B12, which is 38. And then to calculate the effects, you take the group mean, for no, it's 11, minus the grand mean, which is minus 13.5. So that's going to be the effect of not having B12. And then the group effect of, of having B12 is going to be the mean of those who got B12 minus the grand mean, which is positive 13.5. So if I go back to the B12 group effects, then I get the, the no mean minus the grand mean, which is minus 13.5. And then I get the yes mean, 38 minus grand mean, 24.5, which is 13.5. Okay, so I have these four estimates. And then we've only looked at one factor at a time, so how do we actually make predictions for each of the four groups? We can just plug everything in. And so remember, our model had the mu plus the alpha plus the beta was our predict prediction. And so we're going to make four different predictions, one for each combination. And so for those who did not get antibiotics or B12, we're going to take the grand mean estimate plus the alpha of not getting antibiotics plus the beta of not getting B12, and then compute the 7. So where am I getting this? Um, over here, I have each of the four possible categories. So remember that our um, for those who did not get antibiotics, the effect was minus 4. The effect of those who did not get B12 was minus 13.5. So then I'm just plugging everything in. The alpha ante equals no was minus 4. The beta of B12 equals no was minus 13.5. So we predict an average of 7 for the pigs who did not get either one. Now for the pigs who got antibiotics but did not get B12, we take the grand mean plus the alpha of ante equals yes we computed earlier was positive 4. Plus the effect of not getting B12, we computed before, was minus 13.5, so that gives us 15. And then for not getting antibiotics, but yes, getting B12, we have our grand mean, plus the alpha of not getting antibiotics was minus 4. The, the beta of getting B12 was 13.5, that gives us 34. And then for those pigs who got both, it's the same thing where we predict the grand mean, 24.5, the alpha of yes, getting antibiotics is plus 4. The beta of getting B12 is 13.5. Our prediction is 42. So these are the four predictions we would make with this model with no interaction. So in this model, I wanted to um, remind you that this is no interaction. So this is assuming that the antibiotics do not affect the, the difference between whether or not the pigs got B12, uh, the effect of that on weight gain. So it doesn't matter whether pigs got antibiotics or not. The effect of getting B12 or not getting B12 is the same. Um, and so this is all great because we can make predictions, but what about our research questions? What if these differences are only due to chance? How do we tell if there's, they significantly affect weight gain? We run an ANOVA. So in order to run the ANOVA, we run a linear model. So this is just like regression, because remember that regression and ANOVA are both called linear models. And so we run the linear model with the response variable first, and then a tilde, and then the 1 plus our variables, antibiotics plus B12. And again, the data equals feed. So we run the linear model, and then in order to get the ANOVA table, we do the ANOVA function. 
And so here we get our table. We get a mean square for antibiotics, a mean square for B12, and a mean square error of residuals. And so we have two F values this time because we have two separate research questions. Do antibiotics affect the weight gain, and does B12 affect the weight gain? And so the F value is computed by the MS of the factor divided by mean square error. So this 0.85 is the mean square antibiotics, 182, divided by mean square error of 224, and that's 0.85. And then for B12, we have mean square of B12, 2187, divided by 224 mean square error. That gives me 9.75. And then we get two p-values. We get the p-value for antibiotics and the p-value for B12. And as you can see, for antibiotics, it's not significant. So it appears from this model that antibiotics do not significantly affect the weight gain. But B12 does significantly affect the weight gain because its p-value was, was smaller. But we do have to consider, what about the assumptions? Is ANOVA even appropriate here? And so in order to check assumptions, we still have the independence assumption. And the independence means that one pig's weight gain does not affect the other. And the randomness in the design usually helps with this. So even if there was no random sampling, there was random assignment. And so that should help with independence of from each pig to the next. Um, and then we also want to check normality. And so to check normality, we do this the same as we have before with regression. Make a histogram of the residuals of the linear model. As you can see, this is not normal looking. And then we can also do the, the normal QQ plot. And we can see that the, the points are definitely not falling along the line. So there is a problem with normality. We also have to check constant variance. And the way we do this with ANOVA is, remember, we check the ratio of the standard deviations. And this aggregate function comes in handy again because we have, uh, we can also use SD as a function. And so this is the same thing as finding the means where we had the gain as the Y and then tilde factors, antibiotics. And now I'm adding B12 in there because I want to check all four groups. And then the data equals feed again. But now instead of mean, I have SD. I'm looking at the standard deviation. And notice that the largest standard deviation is 11. The smallest one is 2. If I take that ratio, if I just type in 11 over 2, then that's 5.5. I'm going to put this in a comment because if you run this line, R is going to give you an error. So the ratio is 5.5. That's above 2, and that's bad here, especially with such a small sample size. Uh, there's not constant variability. And we can also visually inspect just for fun, even though we, we did this uh, we did this ratio of standard deviations. We can still plot the groups and see how much they vary across each category. And so what I'm plotting is the predictions, the predicted values, against the standardized residuals. You can see there's one group that looks like it has a lot of spread, this group way on the left. And the other three groups do not have a lot of spread. So if we didn't have this group on the left, if we only had these three, then it would look fine. But because these three look pretty similar. But this one looks very far off, it looks like it varies a lot more. So, so you can see, just like with the standard deviations, there's one group that has a lot more variability than the others. And so our constant variance assumption is likely violated here. So what do we do? One thing we can do, if your assumptions don't hold with the two-way model without interaction, you can try adding in an interaction to see if that helps things. If that didn't help things, what I might do, especially with non-constant variance, is try a log transformation. And what that would do is transform the gain into a log. So take the log of the gains, make that into a new column in the data, and use that column as your prediction. Okay. So two-way ANOVA with interaction. So two-way ANOVA with interaction means we have two factors that explain differences. So let's run this model, but now let's consider interaction. Interaction means that the effect of antibiotics on weight gain depends on whether the pig got B12 or not. So how much the pig gains um, based on whether uh, the pig got antibiotics depends on whether or not they got B12. It's different for pigs who got B12 versus those who didn't. So our model with interaction, let me skip ahead to, to the model with interaction. Um, you'd have the same mu grand mean plus the overall effect of the antibiotics 
plus the effect of the weight gain, and then you have an interaction effect. So a lot of this is going to be repetitive. The highlighted parts are added, okay? So I'm going to highlight these parts. The gamma is the interaction effect between the two factors. So for a given group from the first factor, K, and a given group from the second factor, J, there's going to be some adjustment based on this interaction. Okay, so the only difference between the previous model and this one is that there's an interaction effect. So now um, we're going to have four different gammas because there's four possible combinations. The gamma of yes, yes, the gamma of yes, no, and the gamma of no, yes, and the gamma of no, no, because there's four different combinations. And so we're going to have these four different gammas. So how do we find these? So we find these first, uh, we're, I'm going to go through what we did before. We got the grand mean, right? So we got the grand mean of 24.5. That's the average gain across all the pigs. And then we have the antibiotics, the means for each group of antibiotics, the same thing, 20.5, 28.5. The alphas are computed exactly the same way. We have the alpha of not getting antibiotics is the mean of no antibiotics minus the grand mean, minus 4. Same alpha for the effect of getting antibiotics is 4. And then same thing, we already did this. Uh, if you can get the mean of each B12 category, 11 versus 38. And then um, to calculate the betas, the beta of not getting B12 is 11, or, or sorry, it's 11 minus the grand mean, minus 13.5. The beta of getting antibiotics is that category mean minus the grand mean, 13.5. So that all is identical. What's new here now is that we want to find the gammas. And what we need to do first is find the mean weight gain across the four possible combinations. So we have... Um, the aggregate function, what happens here is we can add both variables in there. What happens when you add both variables is that it computes the mean for all the possible combinations. In this case, we have four possible combinations. And so in order to get the interaction, let me go back to this guide. So the alphas and betas are exactly the same, but the gammas are the, for each group, we have the grand mean plus alpha plus beta. Oh, wait, that's the non-interaction predictions. Yeah, so first, before we get the gammas, we need to recall our predictions from the model without interactions because we're going to be using those numbers. So if there was no interaction, you would have um, a predicted value of grand mean plus the alpha anti equals no, which is minus 4, plus the beta 12 equals no effect, minus 13.5, which is 7. It, for the yes-no group, you'd have the grand mean plus alpha n equals yes is 4. The beta 12 equals no is minus 13.5. That's 15, et cetera. So same thing as we did before. Remember when we predicted the four different means um, for the four categories in the model without interaction. But now to consider the interaction, we have to remember these numbers. And then we have to calculate the subgroup means minus the predicted means with no interaction. And so what happens is for each gamma, we have the predicted gain with the interaction, which is the mean of that subcategory, minus the prediction without the interaction. So what we're doing here is taking for no, no, for example, we're taking the mean of the no, no with the interaction. So this is with the interaction, the mean is 19. Without the interaction, you may recall that prediction I made before was 7. So that was from the prediction that I made before. This no-no was predicted to be 7. And then for the yes-no group, for those who got antibiotics but did not get B12, the, the mean with the interaction was 3. So that's the starting number. And then the mean with the interaction for the yes-no group was 15. So we plug that in and you get minus 12. Same thing with no yes, we have the interaction mean is 22. And then the predicted value we had from before, so this is a, the 22 is the, the observed uh, mean with the interaction. And then the predicted value we had before was 34. That's from here. And then subtract that. And then with the yes-yes group, we have 54 is the mean with the interaction, and then subtract out the, the mean that we had predicted without the interaction, 42.
Let me get the gammas. So the gammas are all 12 minus 12 minus 12 and positive 12. Okay. And so then, in order to make predictions, we would plug everything in. But first we want to know, are these significant? Because we don't know if these differences in groups are just by chance or if they're significant. And then we're going to run the ANOVA. So the two-way ANOVA with interaction, what you do is run a linear model just like before, but with antibiotics plus B12 plus, remember that interactions have a colon in R, so you put the first variable colon the second variable, and then data equals feed again, because that's our, the name of our data. So I run the model, and then I'm going to check the results. So with, with the ANOVA table in um, with the interaction, it gets a little more complicated because you have... Um, mean square for A, mean square for B, mean square for interaction, and mean square for errors. And notice that the p-values and f-values are different from without interaction. That's because our mean square error is, is now smaller. Once we took the interaction into effect, so if we look at the table before, our, sum square, our mean square error was 224. But now, in mean square A and mean square B are the same, but now our error is 36.25. And so to get the F value for, for MSA, or for the F value for the antibiotics, you take MS mean square for antibiotics, 192, divided by mean square error 36, and you get 5.29. Mean square for uh, B12 is 2187, divided by mean square error is 60.3. And then the F value for interaction is the mean square for the interaction, divided by mean square error, which is 47.66. Then once you look at the p-values, we see that antibiotics is sort of marginally significant because the p-value is just above 0.05. So I would say it's, it's kind of borderline significant. And then B12 is, um, is highly significant, and the, the interaction term is also significant. So it looks like if the interaction term is significant, that means that there is an interaction and that whether or not a pig gets antibiotics will affect the effect of B12 on weight gain. So in, in other words, um, whether or not a pig gets B12, the relationship between that and weight gain depends on whether or not the pig is taking antibiotics or not. <clears throat> so going back to the guide, then what that would look like visually, let me scroll down, what that would look like is that whether or not the pig got antibiotics and whether or not um, the pig got B12, um, they interact. The, the, the effect of antibiotics is not the same for pigs who did get B12 versus those who did not get B12. So the interaction is significant. Again, you can check the assumptions, and we can check the normality of the residuals, making a histogram. This looks better. I guess it's a small sample size, so it's hard to tell the shape, but it looks roughly well-shaped, but let's, well, sometimes the histogram is kind of hard to examine, so it's better to do a QQ plot in addition to that. And so we see that there, the points mostly fall on the line. There are some outliers, and I think that's what we see in the histogram as well. There's some outliers, but um, overall, it looks better. It looks better than what we had before. And then constant variance, we can use either the describe by function I think I've used in previous code, or this aggregate function comes in really handy as well to check the standard deviations. And uh, here I have a typo, so I apologize for that. This should be 2, and this would be the same, the same as before. So 11, largest standard deviation divided by smallest standard deviation, 5.5. So again, we're likely violating the constant error variance. And again, the same plot we had before, we can check. Actually, this is different because this is a different model. So we can check the predicted values versus the standardized residuals. You see there's four groups. There's one group here, another group here with these three dots, another group next to it, and then another group. So as you can see, again, three groups look like they have similar variability, but one group has a lot more variability. So constant variance is likely violated. So I think that's all of the R code and the guide. You can read the, go through the rest of the guide. Um, just one thing about interaction plots is that if the lines were parallel, if, if there were two lines and they were parallel, that would mean that the effect of antibiotics is the same for both B12 groups. 
But since the lines are not parallel, that means the effect of having B12 depends on whether they got antibiotics or not. Um, and then I think that's that's all I had to say. I guess the, the guide is, is really detailed, so I definitely encourage you to read the guide. And I hope this video has, has helped to kind of connect the R help and tips with the, the guide and also show you kind of what output you should be getting. Uh, but feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Bye.